Hey, 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 what's up everybody? So um, I've been doing this dev tips thing, daily live stream for a while. We got 43 videos in the dev tips uh, with Kent playlist, uh, which by the way, you can find at kcd.im dev tips. But uh, a while back I showed um, how to use React portals to build a modal. And that modal wasn't like accessible or anything. It's not a perfect modal. It's mostly just to show you the React portals API. Uh, and here's what we ended up with is a modal where you get a modal root that's already in the in the document um, And then we create an element for each instance of the modal and then when we mount we append that um, Element to the modal root so it's in the document and then when we unmount we remove um, that element uh, from the modal root so we can get it out um, and then here we use the react portal API and something that I've noticed a lot in um, issues in Enzyme and other places is uh, testing React portals is a little tricky. And so I wanted to take this um, modal and test it. So this is what we have here. So I, I changed this a little bit because our tests are run over and over again. And in Code Sandbox, it doesn't like do a great job of cleaning things up um, because hot module replacement and stuff. So all that we're doing here is um, I don't have a modal root um, element in the document at the start, so I create, um, well, yeah, so here I'm creating it. Um, but then when I hot module re reload this thing, I'm going to uh, see if it already exists. And if it does, then I'm not going to create it again. So anyway, that's all that this code does. It's not super relevant for like normal application use, mostly code sandbox stuff. Um, but yeah, then we have this modal here, and it's all the same stuff and we want to test it so i want to be able to render this modal and i want to make sure that it's going to render my children and that it renders the clothes the reason that this is tricky is because when you render this it doesn't actually appear um, in like the container element that you render it's a appearing in a totally different element because we're using the create portal api which will be set to this.l which is that element that we created in the first place which winds up in the modal root. So it's in a totally different element. Um, and so with Enzyme, this is tricky because you have a wrapper uh, that it gives you back. And that's a wrapper for the, um, the container node that um, you're rendering your stuff to. Um, but the, like this modal doesn't actually render anything inside that wrapper. It renders stuff inside of the modal root. Um, with React testing library though, um, all of the uh, query helpers that you get back from the render method um, are actually bound to document.body. So anything within document.body is accessible, uh, which is one of the reasons why you have to call cleanup after everything, um, every test. So let's go ahead and test this out. Um, I'm going to title the test uh, modal shows um, the, yeah, the children and a close button. Oh, whoops, let's remember our commas. And then um, here I'm gonna need a little bit more room. Um, and then we're gonna need our render method so we can render our modal. And we'll have the, I don't know, a div with test div, thing like that. Um, and we'll get a um, get by text. Um, so we can get that test and so we can get the close button. Um, and then we're also going to have an on close handler. So we'll have a handle close and handle close handle close equals just function. So we can make assertions on that. So there are a couple of things we're going to need to import. We need the render and um, yeah, I guess that's it for now. So we'll import render from react testing library and we're also going to import cleanup and after each we'll clean up uh, there are a couple other ways to do this it's recommended that you do this only once per application and so yeah check that out um, somebody just said hashtag bearded kent man you're already looking good in that <laughs> this is only going to last for another week and a half or so it's coming off after react rally um, so I actually do have another dev tip to show you how to set up a, um, what is it, like a setup 
uh, file in your tests. You only had to do this once in your, uh, for your whole test space. You won't have to do that in every, every file. Um, okay, so yeah, we've got our render. Now we're gonna need to uh, get the test to make sure that exists. So we'll expect get by text test to be truthy. Um, oops. So there are other ways to um, assert this. You could use the just DOM assertions and you could assert that it, it exists in document body or, or in somewhere in particular. Um, but for us, we're we're pretty good. And in fact, um, get by text, it actually will throw an error if it can't find that element. So you could be pretty good just to do this. Um, because if it can't find the element, like um, it, it's going to throw an error. So that assertion right here is actually never going to um, happen um, because this would throw an error before that uh, assertion gets um, uh, dealt with. But I like to do it this way just because uh, when I'm looking at the test, I know what it's supposed to do. Um, okay, cool. So let's save that. I pop open my tests and portals um, is not running for some reason. Hmm. Running test suites. There, cool. All passing. Uh, here, let's mess it up. Make sure it can fail. Yep, it can fail. So it is actually running our assertion. Cool. So then we also want to make sure that when we um, click on the close, it's going to call our handle close method. So let's do our assertion first. We'll expect handle close to have been called times one. This is actually the first time I've I've thought about doing the assertion first. It makes a lot of sense. It's almost like test driven development for your tests. I like that. Okay. So cool. Now let's um, go ahead and write the action. So your your test should take this form. Um, arrange. Um, and actually, I guess this is almost like a act. But um, here we'll do act. Uh, we're gonna do assert. Kind of in the wrong order here. But normally it's arrange act assert. Um, but just by rendering it, it's, it's partially arranging and partially acting. I guess. This is um, act, that'll work, assert. Then we're act and assert again. Um, I don't really care exactly how you do it as long as you're confident your stuff works. So, okay, so now we gotta go click on that button. We're gonna get by text, close. We'll use a regex this time. And we could just dot click and that should work. Um, but I've run into problems sometimes where calling the event handlers like this um, doesn't work quite right. And I didn't investigate enough to figure out what exactly was the problem. So I prefer to use fire event because this will always work fine. So I fire event click on that thing and we're off to the races. So that's that. Um, there's it, what like whether or not this is using react portals or anything else, um, this test will work just fine. So the fact that it's using a portal is actually sort of an implementation detail. Um, as far as the user is concerned, they don't really care where that modal is appearing in the DOM. It doesn't matter to the user, just that it's in the body, like just that it is um, displayed to them. That's all that really matters. And so that's why React Testing Library doesn't really care either. Um, and that's why these uh, queries that you're getting back are bound to the, the body. Um, so yeah, and um, part of the reason that you need to to do this cleanup um, in that case is because if you don't, then we're going to leave that uh, modal in the document, and then we uh, have another test that renders another modal. And when we do get by text, it's going to find um, this test or this close first. So you append another one, and then you run get by text again. It'll get the the one from your previous test. So you need to make sure you clean up after each test. Um, so Jake is saying you should post your live streams in the Reactiveflex community. Jake is totally right. Hmm, maybe I'll do that in the future. Cool, all right, thanks friends. Um, and Jake, feel free to post in the Reactive Flex community too. Um, I actually, sometimes I'm on VPN with PayPal and unfortunately, despite my best efforts, um, Discord is blocked on PayPal's network. And so that's why I'm not on Discord all that much. Um, but uh, yeah, you can post uh, stuff to Reactive Flex. That would be awesome if you could. Okay, cool. That's it for me. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you all later. Bye.